Yo, what's up, my homies? It's so, see, gang, so the brand new video, and today I'm back with a review. Finally, I haven't done a review in a while, and also I'm taking a new look at the review. Well, a new. Hmm, how do I say? A new way at the review. So, anyway, uh, usually what I do is that I sit there on the couch and I basically show you the ship at a far distance and whatever, and I have my face and everything in it. Uh, I'm not really doing that technique, I'm doing a different technique. The original one that I adopted for reviews, which was basically show it. And usually I went through the whole history of it, and yeah. But I just decide to review what's in it itself, and give him history as I go along, because it does include all the history in the book. So anyway, let's go. So, with it comes the ship, uh, Prince Eugen, which is a German battle cruiser slash battle cru <laughs> ship. It was, origin it was originally a battle sh sh cruiser that was converted to a battle ship. Sorry, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm a bit stirry. So anyway, and this is what she looks like, and she is, she is superb. But what's actually shocking is that it cost me eleven ninety nine, and the ship. Let's get Bismarck and see the size comparison. That's the size comparison. Well, look at her. She is so small in comparison to Bismarck. The, the sheer size is just insane, and the fact that she caused so much problems for the navy goes to show how much. Like, she, she, how good she was. <laughs> like, just the size of her. She was a pocket battleship. But anyway, let's go in. So this is the ship. I'll give you a close-up of her. I'll take her off the stand, see what she looks like. Good thing are these aren't waterline models. I don't like waterline models. Got to be very careful. I actually dropped Prince of Wales upside down. So anyway, she's, uh, here at the front you can see her main gun armament, which is huge. Uh, it was a 280 millimeter guns, and you can see her secondaries at the side there. I'll give you a close up. Uh, those like one turret things. Um, they're 150 millimeter guns. <laughs> this thing is this thing was built for war. <laughs> she was converted for war. And there's actually a picture which I'll show you, which I absolutely love, and it's of of the Graf Spree. Uh, next to it, uh, it should be playing out. And yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just insane really about, you know, how she actually, she would, in my opinion, she should have been the ship that went up against HUD, or that HUD would have went up against. So she was armed with a Andro, Andro, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not 100% sure, but she was armed with a seaplane, reconnaissance, you know, uh, she was just a brilliant ship, it's insane. Uh, so anyway, and this is a stand. Admiral Graf Spree, or Spray, different ways to pronounce it. Sorry, the camera's out of focus. But yeah, built in 1940. I can't see one. Yeah, haha. <laughs> there we go. Managed to guess it, and she was off Nazi Germany. So here's the magazine. Uh, you got a lovely picture, illustration of the Graf Spree on the front cover. Uh, next issue is Iowa, the American battleship. You know, Missouri with the, you know, yeah. Uh, so obviously, uh, this is the main launch about her. Uh, she was a Deutschland class. Ooh, I never knew that. Was she? Huh. Yeah. Back in 1934, she was launched. This was just as the Nazis came to power. I mean, this is like, you know, and then they made huge improvements later on. Huge improvements to their ships. Anyway, and there she is. Flying the flag on that, the Kriegsmarine. And there she is down there. Wow. She she is a good ship. <laughs> and there are with her big guns. But yeah, she was classified as a pocket battleship because she was so small, but she had such big firepower. And she was named after uh, Graf Spray, who was the Admiral. And what happened is that it was, I believe it was something to do with Japan. He went over because he knew that war was coming. And so the Germans sent him over to Japan. But the thing, uh, to go and see if he could help them actually go into war. And help them because they were against the Germans in World War One. And obviously it went horribly wrong and he got <laughs> he got hit and down by the navy who was stationed in the Pacific as well and he got absolute murked his entire German fleet. So yeah. Um I don't know much, that much about Craftsbury, I'm so sorry. I don't know, but she was a very good she did her job very well, which was to she was one of the most successful battle cruisers in the German Navy. Uh, she hunted down so many convoys. That's what they believed. The Germans believed the best way was to starve Britain to make them give up the war. 
and she was she had a crest at the bow of her she had a crest i tried to get her in world of warships and she's so hard but anyway and yeah and that was really that tactic and apparently she was the best she sunk the most or i'm not sure anyway this is what she looks like all right so she was ooh, sixteen thousand tons when fully loaded she was 185 meters long with a beam up to 221.65 meters and the draft of that's the thickness or whatever of 7.34 meters she had a top speed of 28.5 knots slightly slower than the bismarck and the other ships like uh, prince of wales which you must heard etc etc and you know obviously these things required like a thousand men you know uh but yeah really uh so yeah those were 11 inch guns those were primaries which are these then a secondary armor and 5.9 which are these oh she was armed with torpedoes as well cool <laughs> i didn't know that you see some ships are kind of um they're kind of got torpedoes and they kind of don't like bismarck was supposed to have torpedoes but she didn't so anyway, um, I don't know much about... Oh, yes, I remember. She was um, basically what happened that the British eventually did go after her. And what happened was that they got into this huge kerfuffle. This huge, like, kerfuffle. Like, Exeter went absolute nuts at Graf Spree. Graf Spree went nuts at Exeter. And they were just throwing each other left, right, and center. They were just going full at it. They were going absolute nuts. All these, like, you know... The German, the Graf Spree against the British, because they just wanted to sink her so much because she became such a large threat to the British convoys. And so what happened was that Graf Spree ended up taking refuge in France. You see, okay. And what happened was that she took refuge, and the British did a very clever thing. What they did was that they told her, they told, um, they sent out a message saying that they had the entire naval fleet outside of France ready to go and sink the grass as soon as she leaves. And what happened was that <laughs> the captain <laughs> on board Grassbury uh, basically <laughs> knew um, what was going to happen. Um, ooh, knew what he was gonna, what was going to happen. And basically what happened, uh, Hans Lang whatever <laughs> sorry 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 i'm so sorry i'm just i don't know graspy that much i'm so sorry and what happened was that uh he basically got all the men ashore he took the ship out himself and he docked it in he docked it out of waters and and the thing is that the british only had two ships they didn't have the entire fleet they hardly had anything and what happened was that he basically set fire to the fuel as you can see here there she is burning he set fire to the fuel and he put Scotland charges on her to sink her, and then he shot himself, and that's basically to, uh, basically used as a block ship to stop the Allies from ever coming up, just in case the Germans are on the retreat at sea, which they did eventually end up on the retreat. And there she is, like, <laughs> with a superstructure out of water. I mean, just look how damaged it is. Wow, I mean, Fire's done that to a ship. Flipping out, you can see her superstructure, like, from the funnel which is from here to here it's bent it's bent over but yeah and what happened was that uh they was broken up partially in the 50s and then what happened was that it uh it basically it did rest on the water for quite a while and then eventually in 2004 they went right that's it let's rip her apart because she's a war grave for the one guy and yeah but it caused a huge kerfuffle because what they did was that they actually raised one of the golden Nazi eagles and then the German government went absolute nuts and they were like, don't you dare put it on display. And then they were like, no. And then you know, they had to cover up the swastika as they pulled it up. That's how insane it was. And her guns, apparently, I'm not sure if it's from her. Uh, I'll look it up. But one of her guns was actually pulled up from the wreck and actually is on display as a museum in germany which is nuts absolute nuts and that's the graph spree really so next issue next two weeks is us iowa uh i'm sorry if i didn't get over any of the ships they didn't really appeal to me i should have got the south dakota i made a mistake but i'm not gonna just do that now but anyway uh, it was it's really the iowa and the missouri that i'm interested in american and the musashi same as the yamato really you know 
<laughs> it was, I, I don't know if it's a money scheme they're doing or what, or, you know, trying to save money, but it's quite annoying that they're doing the same ship. So, like, issue after this, if they do M Missouri, I'm going to go nuts. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the Graph Spray. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And join me next time as I'll be doing Iowa. And as always, peace out, my homies.